This is Real Women Celebrating Women in Independent Film. My name's Brenda Daly and I'm your host and I'm here with Tennille Tara Savage. Is that right? But I'm going to call her Tennille T because I don't know, these women's got some pretty long names that I've been uh, interviewing today. But Tennille is a actress. She is a executive producer and she's also an art director and I feel like she wears many many hats um, she just finished a film called if I can't have you and so she's going to talk to us about that and she's also going to talk to us a little bit about her journey and uh, what got her started Naked Nietzsche? Have you ever considered that you criticize my profession? Psycho. I've come to find that people that resist my help tend to need it the most. I leave for 10 minutes and there's a boy in your room. 40 years old, Barb. You're right. Prisoner 08152013. Your parole officer said you were coming in. <laughs> There are a ton of crazies in the world and they all want you. Too bad none of you can have me. Stop! You're hurting me! You so much as look at me! Look who it is, the prodigal psycho. I can't have you. No one can. I was just trying to keep you safe. My sister has a sketchy history with men. Oh, welcome. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Have a good concept. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to let people know, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about you and what got you started? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm a, a middle-aged woman that's kind of late to the game, but I'm loving every minute of it. I uh, basically never thought about this, um, but I have been in manufacturing for the last two decades. So I have mm -hmm. a lot of production experience. I'm just making cars instead of making movies. And um, in about 2008 to 2010, we had the incentives here in Michigan. And so um, some friends of mine were getting on like these HBO extras. And I was like, that is so cool. How are you doing that? And so I found out how to get into the extras casting. And that's really where it started. I got on one set before we lost the incentives in Michigan. And I got to be a featured extra, so I was pretty close to the action. And I was just, you get to watch, you know, a lot. And so I was just like, oh my gosh, I could do that. And I could do that. So and you so, never did any acting or anything before that? No, I mean, I more so wanted to be a model, like as a little girl, but then I never got the height. And I never, again, I never thought that Hollywood or making movies is something you could do in the Midwest. I mean, it just wasn't something you know, when we were younger that we were doing in school, you know, so it just, it never crossed my mind. So, um, some friends of mine from Ford, you know, through my day job, were like, Hey, we're going to make this short film. Would you like to be the actress? And that was 2016. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, Oh my gosh, that sounds like so much fun. So, um, I signed up for it and we started rehearsing, but then I realized they didn't have locations or a schedule. So I jumped in and, you know, started doing that stuff because I just really wanted the movie to take place. So eventually they gave me a producer credit and I was like, Oh, that's what a producer is. <laughs> And so once I realized that at that time for my day job, I was traveling about once a quarter globally to do training. So I was like, well, gosh, 
I could make training videos, you know, instead of doing all that travel. So I talked to my boss and we flipped the budget from travel to editing because I knew I could write and direct and produce training videos, but I just don't have the technical skills. So I've been actually able to parlay my day job into a lot of video production, but more on the corporate realm. Yeah, I think that's super exciting because well, I have two daughters. My youngest is an actor. She's been acting since she was nine. I have another daughter who uh, actually um, is in marketing and she works for uh, Starbucks. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. But she works for Nestle's, who the Starbucks division. And it's so funny because my youngest does the film and stuff, but my my middle daughter actually makes training videos for Starbucks. So oh, it's so cool. funny. Yeah. They yeah, say it's that because, now. So they're literally both on camera all the time. Right, right. <laughs> well, they get it from their mother then, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I think it's super exciting. I think two people, I think just to hear you talk um, is that people who really want to get involved in the business, uh, and it, you can start at any age because right. there are characters that are needed at any age. Right. Um, I think that because you've had a manufacturing job, I think people are like disconnected this is a business right and it's the right. business of acting and i feel like somebody with a very strong business background would probably excel at this a little faster than someone with just a creative background because the creative background you can be a fine actor but if you don't right. know what to do with it right right what do you do with it really right Right. So, and that was really the main point for if I can't have you is really trying to figure out combining the love of the art of the creativity of making the movie mm -hmm. with the business of, okay, how do you find distribution and how do you sell it and how do you market it? So, you know, going back to your daughters, you almost do need to be, um, you know, a, a business manager or production manager, you know, you need to be um, a, a creative and then you need to have the, the sales and marketing if you want to see it all the way through. And I feel like in the indie world, you can pick and choose based on your strengths. But for me, I like it all. I love it all. And I'm, I'm learning it all. And I'm sure at some point I'll want to specialize or hone in um, once I realize the things I don't like. Mm -hmm. But for now, I feel like I've got to learn it all. And, um, you know, because how can you really train somebody or outsource it if you yourself don't know what you want? So, so I'm still very, very much in a growing and learning phase. So from 2016, it was all short films and short documentaries from there. In 2019, we put together what we called a bundled premiere, which was basically like a birthday party and a graduation party all bundled in one. But we were celebrating that year's projects. Uh -huh. And when we put it on the timeline, it was two hours. And then at that point, I realized, oh my gosh, like, why aren't we making a feature? And, and only until that point did I realize, yeah, we can do this. And then I um, was also getting involved with the 48 hour challenges. Um, those I think are just amazing, especially for people that are wanting to get into filmmaking. I think it's a great way to network and to really see the whole pre-production, production and post-production process in one weekend. Very unusual. Yeah, after I've done many 48 hours, I've directed and written yeah. and produced and I've acted in them. Um, I think it's yeah. a great, I think it's a great training ground. Um, okay. I actually just finished my first feature film. I haven't, I'm actually in the process of uh, hopefully getting it distributed. I haven't shopped it yet. I literally just put the package together. Uh -huh. but, it, but you know what, for me, because I've always worked for somebody and not for myself until the last year or so, I think uh, it's been quite a challenge because I didn't work at a job in manufacturing or in business. Uh, my husband's really good at that stuff. So I've been kind of trying to learn through him. But I think, uh, I was just talking to the last lady, I feel like in high school, uh, these kids are very internet savvy, but they really need to teach them how to build a website. Yeah. How to set up a pitch deck because I, I literally, um, I've been taking these business for actors classes through Wendy Elaine Wright. And the list of things that I have to turn in are everything that you need to turn in as a filmmaker. 
And then, of course, when I look up pitch decks and uh, websites and everything, it's all the same no matter what you're selling. And yeah. at the end of the day, we're selling the film. And, right. and I think the reason why you went from short to feature too is because you can't sell a short film. Right, right. That was our calling card. That was our calling card. So how the project came to be is I had the realization. And so I went first to the writer, Matt, and I pitched the idea to flip the the leads and the characters and kind of like a fatal attraction story. Uh -huh, so, uh -huh. so like, there are so many movies that were just flipping the script and making the female the lead. And that was another goal is as, you know, a, a mature female, I wanted to create, a you know, a, a, a role for myself and, and for others, you know, obviously, but, um, but so I just, um, I, I made that pitch to him and he was like, yeah, let's do it. But that's too boring. Just flipping it. We got to do more. So his big thing was wanting to make it very self-aware, like screen. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. And so that's what the movie really does. It's just, it's, it's really, um, you know, a love letter to the stalker flicks of the eighties and nineties, but mm -hmm. really kind of making fun of them because, you know, we did make this movie during COVID, you know, it was definitely intended to be a thriller, you know, like, um, very much like fatal attraction is, you know, um, but as we were going through COVID, we were like, okay, we need to lighten this up a little bit, make it a little more fun. Um, so that's where Mandy, my sister, Barb in the film, she's just a total hoot. And we just let her improv a lot. And so it really did um, adjust it a little bit, maybe to be more of a dark comedy than the thriller that we initially set out for. Mm -hmm. But I think that's just how art does evolve. But at the end of the day, you got to make sure it gets done. So that's what I'm seeing with a lot of people in the indie space. Um, you know, is is the projects they're either just not getting through production, but even more so through post production. So I I think that's where about eighty you know percent of the projects you know kind of reside. Um, um, in I think two world. things happen. So I actually started a micro series called Mom Squad, which I was the lead in. Nice. And I was doing that. I raised the money through uh, Season Sparks, and then. I got this opportunity to write and direct my first feature film. And I was like, I literally just raised the money. Yeah. So I was doing double. Well, I guess it's good that I don't have a regular job because I literally had the time to do it. Yeah. But I actually have to veer back to the other one. And I am personally finding it hard to. Uh, yeah. Yes. Because you get so focused on the one project. Right, right. So I think it's different for different people, or at least the artists that I've surrounded myself with. Um, some are that way. You know, it's it's one, you know, direct focus. Um, for me, I sometimes need two or three going on because I, I do get anxious easy. Uh -huh. So if I've got to wait for something to come through, you know, instead of like being antsy about it, then I just kind of pull back and then go work on this one. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I do like to bounce back and forth a little bit, but that's only, um, difficult or dangerous once everything starts coming all at once, which I feel like that's where I'm at right now until like the middle of May. So I've got, um, a second feature film that I'm, um, I have a small role in and I'm helping the director produce it. Uh -huh. And, uh, we just got about three more days of filming on that. And then I'm also doing a SAG short called Dominus. Uh -huh. And that's really fun. The director and writer is actually from LA. So he's, his specialty is more like special effects. So we're basically bartering. So that's another thing that is really common, at least in, in my realm here in Michigan. Well, I have a term oh. for that. I call it creative currency. Oh, yes. Okay. So, yeah. So I talk a lot about creative currency because a lot of times when you're doing independent film and you don't have a lot of cash. Right. And, and maybe you don't want to take on an investor uh, right. for bigger money. 
Right. Uh, a lot of times you, you know, because it is independent, you can do creative currency. And that's like yeah, a lot of people, even when they crowdfund, they crowdfund people for roles or uh -huh. uh, for producer or executive producer credit. And so oh, that's all right. creative currency. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't really gotten into that space yet, you know, for funding. But um, but yeah, I, I definitely feel like, you know, the creative currents, currency or the bartering, as I was calling it, um, is just a really, you know, creative way of, of getting things done. And then it does build bonds and networks and, and things like that. So I'm really excited for that director and then he's going to be then turning around and helping with the special effects and props then on um on really kind of the big next feature which is called chasing the ghost which will be in production in july oh that's, so that's exciting. yeah so that's the one that uh rehearsals start next week i've got about um probably 55 i'm looking at the wardrobe right now um probably about 55 or 60 outfits you know already organized uh-huh that's and, great yeah so i feel you know like we're in a good place but again it's just like until we're there i don't relax so well, i think I, that's I, just I, normal i think it is too <laughs> i think it's I think I get a little manic right before production because yeah. I'm trying to do everything too. And, and I think that when you're, you know, and, and I think when you're in the independent space, unless you have a, a ton of cash, uh, you have to, you have to be a, you have to wear many, many hats. Yes. And so let, let me ask you something. Can we see uh, your movie uh, if I can't have you uh, yet anywhere? Yeah. Yep. So it is streaming. It started streaming April 1st. And so we are on, um, you know, platforms like Amazon Prime, um, Voodoo, uh, Google Play, Xbox. And then we're also on the cable stations like Comcast, Dish, DirecTV. Um, and then I believe in July, then we'll go to like the next set of platforms, like probably like the two B's and stuff like that. Right. And how so, has the distribution been for you? Because I hear so many yeah. nightmares and it's been petrifying for me, honestly, because I don't know, you don't know who to trust. Right. <laughs> right. So, so again, that was, you know, one of the main purposes of producing this movie was to have that feature calling her to learn distribution. And so what my strategy was, was I um, went to virtual AFM in 2020. So what was pretty beneficial there was you got the exhibitor's handbook and it was PDF but I printed it out and I went through every single one and looked up their IMDB score and how many titles they had. And I basically put together a matrix of 175 that I wanted to pursue. Mm -hmm. And it then was about a three month process. So, you know, I would send about 25 or 30 emails out a day. So it took a good week and a half to get through the whole list. And then they started coming back. So I included- So you self-distributed or you, or you just contribute? You, so or I was more like my own sales agent. Okay, that's what I meant, that's what I meant. Yeah, so I was more like, yeah. So I didn't really have a sales agent, but then once I, so once I, I did get distributors directly interested. And then afterwards I did meet with a few sales agents and I was like, well, why would I work with you? Cause I'm already working with the people you're working with. Right. What I'm saying. So, so yeah, by doing that, I do feel like I saved the team, you know, 15 or 20%. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, it really is, you know, a, a process and there were two two people I felt uncomfortable with, you know, during those interviews, I could tell, you know, one wanted a 15 year contract and, you know, one, you know, was spouting off. And then I looked him up on the internet and it was very interesting what I found. So you do want to do your, your research. And, you know, I definitely made notes, you know, after meetings. I know. mean, having a sales acquisition person is amazing. Uh, it's just that you sort of, it's, it's all about who do you trust? Because I mean, I had right. somebody calling me and I don't even know. He was asking for like 25% and I was like, and then uh -huh. I, of course, you know, I do have a couple partners. So it's, and they're like, no, that's, that's like way over the top. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, most of the sales agents were wanting like 15 to 20%, which I, I did think that was steep, you know, then on top of the distribution percentage. So, so yeah, by the time it trickles back to the indie producer, 
you know, it's like a percentage of a percentage of a percentage, you know, type thing. But I mean, that's really the only way we can keep it, you know, going. So my strategy is, is, you know, keeping the investment low. So that way, you know, the return on investment, you know, will more than likely happen. Um, Cause you know, that's the ultimate goal. So yeah, I'm definitely getting more into that business realm and um you know otherwise it really is just an expensive hobby i mean it is a passion of love and and you can do a handful of them but you know even the shorts are a few thousand dollars so yeah, you know it's, just, it's not sustainable just to keep doing yeah, it for fun right and that's a that's a big thing so when people are starting out i know it starts out as fun and you get very passionate about it yeah. but at the end of the day you really have to look at it like a business and can yeah. you sell can yeah. i sell this can because i think media is getting more and more in, in need and the thing is is that i know uh during covid a lot of things shut down so right now you know we're in this little pocket yeah. And it's a lot cheap. Cameras are a lot cheaper now. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot more creative currency going on. Yeah. And so I think that uh, it's good to be in that pocket if, if you're self-starters like you and I. But I also think that it's, okay, people, life is what you do with it. Right. So if you're, you know, if you have a plan, you don't even have to have a plan. Have right. a plan and make a plan. Right. You know, and then open up your eyes to opportunities uh, and really listen. I think uh, go to as many meet and greets as you can. Uh, talk to people. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I did the show was uh, I wanted to open up my world with people that are doing the same thing I am. So it's really yeah. great to meet you, Tanil. I mean, that's I, I'm excited to meet you because, you know, you, you are a little older starting, but it, it, you're just proof my proof every day that women have to be multitaskers because we're yes. the mothers and we're the, you right. know, and, and we've done that our whole life. So we're really good at this. Right. Absolutely. And, and we don't really have an ego that goes along with it. We just know that there's a job to do and we have to get it done. Yes. Yes. And, and I feel like that's why, you know, there's more and more opportunities. We just have to create our own to start and show what we can do and, and then the world will understand yes that, that we can do anything we want to do and that's whether you're a man woman whether, whether you're disabled whether you're whatever the issues are you know if you really want to do something uh, you just have to go and do it the lady i just talked to earlier uh she had a double mastectomy before her biggest oh, wow. okay. so it, it you know and she but she did it yeah yeah you know and now she's you know she's done bigger and bigger things because I think yeah, you just have to kind of keep your ears open and I think that's with all business and I love the fact that you went to AFM online because that just goes to show that you know here's a woman who didn't really understand it but she was like okay let's get to work and yeah who do I need to talk out. to yeah, yeah, just figure it out. And it is a lot of sweat equity at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I, I hate to call it the struggle phase, but I think, you know, any artist, whether it's, you know, music, film or, or whatever, um, you know, it's almost like you have to pay your dues or, you well, know, that's an error, even if in manufacturing. Just, yeah, right. Exactly. You start at the bottom. Exactly. And you're always going to start at the bottom. So exactly. It, it just, exactly. You just got to start, right? Yep. Exactly. No matter what age you are, but you you know you've got to pay those dues. And so, um, so yeah. I mean, it was a lot of work, and most people don't have the tenacity to like look up you know 500 people and then type them all individually in and then send them all an email and then track it all. Um, so but you know that's what an actor has to do when they're getting agency or if they're in development. Just so you know. It's okay. all it's it's all the same thing. It's the same package that you yeah. just did. You have to do the same as being an actor. And uh, I think people and and that is what I have learned over the last year is because literally you have to set yourself up. And that's why I was talking about how these kids need to learn. Yeah. Because, because they would be so much farther ahead of, than us. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? They they wouldn't right. have to wait because they would say, okay, well, this is the business. This is what I have to do. If I want to be a filmmaker, then these are the steps I have to take. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah, and I definitely think that there's, you know, definitely things that people, you know, 
need to accomplish in that journey, but everybody's journey is so different, you know? So I think that is what's good about filmmaking though, is you can be real intense for a period of time and then you can step back and right. reflect and grow. And then those things that you, you know, you've collected, you can then bring that back, you know, into your art. So I think that's, you know, the, the great thing about being on both sides of the camera is then you've got a little bit more input or say into what those stories are, how they're, they're told. And so that's where, where I like to be able to have a little bit more influence than just being the actress, but actually developing the character and, and what's happening to Sounds them. like directing's in your future. I think it is. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the more and more that I'm getting into things and, and uh, again, learning, and I never thought that would be a thing for me, you know, because I've loved the acting so mm -hmm. much, but the more that I'm watching other people direct, you know, you start like, well, yeah, I could do that. And I do think, you know, the directors that are actors or started as actors, I think they're some of the best directors because they understand like how to talk to the actor and really actually yeah, they, they are, you know i think i being on set as an actor even if you're just an extra or background i think that you you tend to understand that you have to have a a relationship with the camera yes. and you have to uh really understand that when you're filming stage is different but when you're film acting you really are have to give that camera lens or yeah. the person you're working with yeah you really have to give them a little piece of your soul so that it comes through on Ooh, film yes. it's yeah. right up in front of you and and uh the best trick i ever was taught and i say this a lot the best trick i was ever taught was let's say you're just having a bad day but you know you're on set and you have to get things done sometimes <laughs> just have a thought it yeah. could be any thought you know but it, it a thought in the moment because that will reflect in your eyes when the camera's in your face. It doesn't even yeah. have to be about what you're talking about. Right, right. Because yeah. we're always, always having a thought. We're always saying that next thing. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. Right. No, that's that's a really good point. But but yeah, I definitely feel like it all started with the acting. But then, in order for that to happen, you know, it's just lending kind of those business skills and you know, all of that production experience to help get the movies made. So it really has, you know, been a great experience just then working with a lot of other creatives. So, you know, both actors and crew members, I feel like we had, you know, a small team of like five people that we started with for If I Can't Have You. Mm -hmm. And then it just kept growing and growing. And you know, it's, it was almost like the field of dreams. It's like, you know, they will come and, and it was amazing. It was almost divine. Like we ended up, you know, getting a wardrobe person, an attorney, like people that just wanted to, you know, be a part of the project. So I do think if you're passionate, if you have a good project in front of you and you've got the right vibe and morale that people will, you know, come and, participate with that creative currency and help you, you know, get your dream made. And then in turn, you know, you're going to help keep that energy flowing and maybe along the way you'll get some more roles, you know? So it really is just like this natural, like family here in Michigan, trying to just keep this going. I, I feel like, cause um, I've been in Vegas for quite some time. I feel like, um, it's really anywhere you're at, even in LA, there, if you really want to get something made, you just have to have the tenacity uh -huh. to just reach out. It's yeah. all about reaching out. Um, I had a friend of mine, uh, I met because I was bartending and uh, he was a manager for CBS on the lot. And mm -hmm. he was a manager and he basically told me that, um, don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. It's the biggest thing that anybody can tell you. You know, everybody's always so afraid to ask, oh, they're going to think I'm stupid. You know what? You're, you don't know until somebody tells you. So ask, you know, right. maybe you, know, you can ask, you know, it's a sales job. So you can ask 10 people the same thing. You might get nine no's, right. but you're going to get that 10th yes. And so you, right. can't be afraid. you can't be afraid because no one who is successful in any kind of business is afraid to ask. They just do it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's what you 
And I'm super proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to hear more about your first feature film. That's yeah, I'll send, I'll send you the package. I literally, um, yeah. yeah, basically what's going on with Rogue Angel. It's a female empowerment. Um, it's, I call it my own personal melodrama because when I was a kid, my dad played the villain in every melodrama in, in town. Like he was dark hair, dark <laughs> eyes. He was just that guy and he had this big booming voice. And so it is a female empowerment movie with a very heavy melodramatic, you know, and, and it, it was super fun. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it, I thought it was very well received when we had our uh, premiere. So uh, yeah, so we just went up to some executive producers and basically there were three films out of seven that were finished because it was called the Lucky Seven Challenge, but oh. they only had, they had seven filmmakers that were supposed to make these films in seven days for $7,000. Oh. And uh, they gave us seven thousand dollars, but we could spend it to eleven thousand. So, oh. so we had seven to ten days to film it. We, of course, we could do our pre-production before and after, but they actually scheduled us the time, and I ended up having to go first because people were dropping out like crazy. So oh. really, and I was the underdog out of all seven, oh. and only three of us finished. So now, oh. out of three of us, um, I, before I go to distribution, I'm, I uh, just sent a package in and. Then, what they're doing is they're sending it to all the people who donated to the project, the Lucky Sevens. They get to vote on who gets a limited theatrical release. Ooh. So I just sent that package out through the Galaxy Theater. So I'm hoping, because I really yeah. think we did a good job. Their there, other films were good, but I feel like ours was just a little different. Okay. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. I want to ask you, what woman in film has inspired you to even do any of this? Yeah, so I would say there wasn't really any woman that pulled me in other than that friend, you know, that had that that extra in the HBO that kind of, you know, gave me the idea of, oh, maybe this is something for real. But I would say the female in film that I admire right now the most is Reese Witherspoon. I oh, mean, yeah. I think that, you know, she's doing the same thing, creating content that she can be a part of you know, and also looking at it from a business perspective. So, um, I think too, that's how the industry is going. Like, um, I was just watching Euphoria and then yes. the girl who plays the lead, uh, she, she's an executive producer. Yeah, if exactly. you look at all of them, yeah, yeah. Look, at, look at all that's going on. Especially women who are a little bit older, they're creating their own content and that's right. where the world is going. Right, right. And with TikTok and YouTube and all of those things, we're proving that anybody can be a celebrity if they yeah. if they create good content. Right, absolutely. Right? So yeah. you can, so believe in yourself. I think is what uh, Tanil and I are trying to tell you. Absolutely. So, is there anything else that you would like people to know about you before we sign off? You no, nothing specific other than just get your project done. Don't get hung up. Just enjoy it for what it is. Learn from it and apply that to the next project. I think, you know, that's the biggest, you know, issue in, in indie filmmaking is people get too caught up. So just keep making, keep creating and, and don't let yourself get hung up on one project. Right, right. Well, it was super awesome talking to you. I feel like you were extremely inspiring to others. Um, this is Brenda Daly and we are celebrating women in independent film. This is Real Women. And today we celebrated Tennille Ter I can T, Tennille T. Tennille T, just wait some more. It was super fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate your time, Brenda, and best wishes with all of your film stuff. Absolutely. Too. Yeah, I can't wait to see yours too. Yes, great. Good talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.